Hey YouTube, XCT here. In the last video, we ended up getting root access to the registry server. Now we're going to enumerate the machine a bit and use the company's private npm registry to backdoor an npm package, which will then lead to access on one of the developer's clients. Finally, we escalate privileges and do some post-exploitation work. Okay, let's start. So I'm back here on the registry server. And if we just like look in the root folder, we can see there's the flag, but also um, a Vedaccio um, directory. And if we look at EPC, the same directory also exists. Um, config file here. And um, if we just quickly search for Vedaccio on the file system. you see a few more locations that are interesting here. So let's have a look at this config here. Maybe there's like credentials there, right? Always worth checking out, um, but not really. It's telling us though that authentication to the Verdaccio registry is done via this file. So let's have a look here. And we get a credential here. Um, so let's save that one. Maybe also let's like put it here, um, registry.hash. And then we should be able to crack it. Um, but before we do that, let's actually check out what Vedaccio is. If you just Google for that, you'll see um, Vedaccio is basically a private NPM registry, um, like I mentioned in the intro. Um, basically, if you develop Node.js apps, um, you can have your private registry um, inside your company. And the advantage is that you can, well, have like proprietary code there, but also have mirrors of packages that you would find online. So this is something that's not too uncommon to have like in a developer network like we are in right now. And also if we like check the open ports here, you can see that Verdaccio is actually listening here on 4873. So we can also have a look at this website, which is this one here. Um, you don't need authentication to see this, um, but if you actually want to um, like push your own packages or change something, you would need authentication. So we can just view it. And you can see in the registry, there are no like private packages, no private source code, but we do have express. In this case, I think it's safe to say that this express here in this private registry is being used by the developers and the company. Otherwise, why have it, right? First of all, we want to crack um, or see if this hash actually cracks, right? So let's try that. And you can see that it cracks. So this is the password. So what are we going to do with this password? So Express is used by developers in the company. Um, and we now have credentials that would allow us to push our own packages here or modify an existing one. Um, if you think about it, pushing your own packages isn't probably that useful because why would anyone use them, right? Usually they already have their applications and they might just do an NPM update or NPM install and they just want to get the express version from here. So modifying the existing one is more like um, something that will maybe lead to something. And um, just a quick note, how am I even like reaching this website here? It's in the internal network. Well, with um, Foxy Proxy, you can just point it to your SOX proxy here and then reach it. Okay. So in order to backdoor express, um, we can basically download um, the version that's on the server here, and then we can modify it. So the, the point of downloading it here is that you want to backdoor basically the exact same version. If you do a different version, like for example, a newer one, this might cause some problems because the newer one maybe has like different dependencies. And then if the client um, does an NPM update, it might not be able to find them if it doesn't have internet. So you want to backdoor the exact version that's in here. All right, let's copy this package we just got over here. Um, should be this one. And then let's unpack it. All right, let's go in here. So where could we place something like a backdoor? Um, there are two ways, or well, there are more than two ways, but two ways I'm going to cover here. One is um, you go to package.json. We have to do that in any case. Um, and if you want to push a new version of Express, we have to increase the version number here. So if we just do dot four here, we'll be fine. As soon as we push this package, it will be the most recent one in the registry. And anyone doing update will actually get our version instead of the original one. 
So where could we place um, like any code, reverse shell code, something that that gives us um, code execution, right? Um, there's this part here at the at the bottom which says scripts, and you can basically put shell commands here. And one way to do that is we can put a post install hook here. And what this will do is it will just execute whatever is um, in this area here as a shell command whenever this package got installed, um, which is the case if the user will just do an npm update. What could we put here? Well, we want to put a reverse shell, right? So I'm just going to put one here like this. And this could work. Um, there's just one thing um, missing, one piece of information. We don't really know who is actually using this registry. So um, I put a reverse shell for Linux here, but it doesn't really mean that there's a Linux client, right? We don't know that at this point. So how can we find out um, if someone is using this? First of all, let's save this. We don't really know from, from Bloodhound or anything like that, but what we can do is we can run TCP dump on this machine, on this port, and just see if anyone connects. Um, this is not perfect because you don't really like know if anyone is going to update right now, so you could wait for a long time. But in this case, um, well, because it's a lab and there has to be some automation, you will actually see the traffic here after a bit. All right, here we go. We got some traffic and we can see that this traffic comes from this IP address here. So let's stop the capture and if we just ping it, uh, we can see from the TTL that this is a Linux box. So it makes sense to place a Linux reverse shell here. And it's good to check in some way because otherwise, um, well, it makes no sense to send a Linux reverse shell to a Windows client, right? And we would just be noisy without like any reason. So we have to think a bit more about what we're actually going to do now. Um, we can push this package from the command line. And as soon as the client does an update, um, our shell will execute. But if we think of the user, well, he's doing an update and it will basically hang until our shell is closing. So we can't really stay in that shell too long if we don't want to attract attention. So um, what we're going to do is generate an SSH key and basically paste it quickly into the user's authorized keys file so we can close this shell and then access the client with a proper um, SSH session instead of doing um, this reverse shell and blocking his, um, his install process in the end. So let's generate the key here. Actually, let me close this one and let's call it, I don't know, rec. So now we have rec.pub. Just going to copy that here. And this is the one we um, will echo into authorized keys the moment we get the shell. So let's actually publish the package now. Well, first of all, we have to log in with the credentials we found, right? So we do um, npm login and give it the registry. And the username was Ladaccio and the password was this one. And we are logged in. So clear. And now we should be able to do npm publish to actually publish the package to the registry, just like this. Let's see. And this worked. Now there's Express in a new version there. We check here. You can see that our new version is now actually uploaded to the registry. And now we basically just have to wait for someone to use the package. And if our backdooring attempt was successful, we should get a shell here. And we get our shell. So let's see, we are Carol Mason on client 02, and this is actually 11.11, .11, exactly the IP we expected. So let's go to the home folder here, um, go to the SSH directory, and then let's quickly put our key here. So like this, and now we should be able to SSH with the user. Let's try that. And then we gotta use proxy chains, let's see. And yeah. SSH works, we can now exit this shell and everything will be good for the user again, right? So let's look around a bit. In the home folder, we can see we have desktop documents, downloads, and so on. So this tells us this is actually a desktop version um, of some Linux and not a server version because otherwise you wouldn't have these folders. Um, I would expect it's Ubuntu, so let's see. Yeah, we have a Ubuntu 22 here. All right. Um, let's have a look at this projects folder here. Web 
And if we look here, this is likely the app it's just doing the update on, right? So there isn't really much we can do here. It's just how this works here. The Carol user is um, working on this web project, the npm update. This pulled the malicious package and gave us the shell. All right. So let's look around a bit more. Um, we want to see um, maybe there's something on desktop, maybe in documents, downloads. Always worth checking out, right? But it's all empty. Let's see what else we have here. Um, config is always something could be interesting. That's not really something here that's too useful right now. Let's check out the local directory. Um, there's share. And we have some stuff here, but it also doesn't really look like super interesting. Um, let's see, there was also the snap directory, so let's go here. And this is interesting, there's Firefox installed, so let's go here. Um, let's go to common. And this looks like another home folder, um, and there's a .mozilla directory here, so let's go there. And Firefox. And this here is a Firefox profile. So this means that the user actually used Firefox before and maybe he has stored some bookmarks or credentials or something like that. So that's definitely worth checking out. How would you find this? Well, either you do it manually, like, like I just did, or you just run a previous script again and it will find Firefox uh, likely as well. So let's go here. And this is the Firefox profile directory. And interesting files here are logins.json and the key database. Also some others, but um, and in logins, it would basically have usernames um, and encrypted passwords in case the user stored any. So let's have a look here. There's indeed a credential stored here for Gmail, um, which is, well, it doesn't really show the uh, username either because the username is encrypted and the password is encrypted. So we have to use some kind of tool here to actually decrypt it. Um, so one of these tools we can use is this one called Firefox Decrypt. And basically, yeah, it's just doing that, right? You upload the tool and it will recover the clear text credentials. So, so I already downloaded this just as a zip here, and we are going to upload that to the target box. Um, you could also do it offline, doesn't really matter. Uh, maybe doing it offline is a bit better because you don't have to like run stuff on the target. But in this case, I'm just going to run it on the target itself. So let's go back to home here. And then let's grab the file of my box. Zip it. Now we have the Firefox decrypt here. And I think we just have to run it like this. All right, but it's complaining because it can't find the profile. Um, but we just found the profile, right? It's not in um, the home folder directly, it's in this snap directory. So let's just run it with the full path to the home folder like this, um, directly pointed to the profile. And now it can do its job and it's actually decrypting credentials here. So that's interesting. Um, so is this the password of this user? Well, we could try with a sudo dash l, right? Um, if it's if it's her password, we should be able to get this here, and at least see the sudo entries. But it's not her password, so this doesn't work. What else could this be? Well, there could be a password reuse. Maybe Carol is an actually admin on the box. Um, let's try to become root here. But this also failed. Um, if you look at the password itself, you can see that it uh, yet again ends in a year. So um, maybe we have to like just decrement it like this. Let's try again on root. And this time it works. And this is the actual root password on the box. Okay, um, there's also an alternative way because Carol um, has an SSH key for root actually stored in her key ring. So you can also try to get the root key from the key ring if you want to. All right, now that we are root, um, there are a couple of steps we can do again for post exploitation. One of them is always capturing traffic. I'm not going to do that right now, but that's always something you can do after you own the box. Um, or just snooping around the box a bit, right? Um, it doesn't really look like in root itself there's too much going on. Um, there's a root key here. So if you want to get access later on, uh, good idea to save that one. And 
Another directory that's always interesting is the temp directory, especially of an Active Directory joint Linux boxes. So let's have a look at the temp directory here. And we can see that there are a couple of um, interesting files here. Um, some are owned by a user we haven't seen yet, which is Connor Brown. Um, so this is interesting. And the main like two important files here are these two. Um, these are actually the cached Kerberos tickets of the domain users. So if we were to use these tickets, we can actually impersonate the domain users. Um, this is not so interesting for Carol because we got already access to her, right? And we also placed an SSH key. So we are good on that side, but um, for Connor, we didn't have that user yet. So it might be really useful to actually grab that ticket and do something with it. This is actually what we're going to do in the next video. We are going to use the ticket to literally move to another machine. And then we'll be back again in the Windows world, um, have to bypass Windows Defender application control and dive deeper into the um, Windows Active Directory parts of the network. All right, that's it for this video. Um, thank you for watching and see you next time.